Good evening, everybody. Matrix here, and here is the list of stocks that I'll be watching and I'll be looking for to be trading on September 23rd. Okay, uh, taking a look at the SPY and actually bring in the SPY futures right now real quick. Just give me a quick second here. SPY futures, um, from the close, we have been running back up ever so slightly and it tested this uh, 3000 area and uh, we are getting held up over here. So this is a positive sign. As you can see on Friday, we sold off hard and uh, let's take a look at what caused this sell off real quick. With that, uh, we will bring in the SPY chart real quick. Okay, so SPY loading up some drawings real quick here, uh, SPY and uh, right over here on the daily chart, SPYD. Okay, so SPY. Uh, we had this massive dump with volume. It cleared and dumped under the 300 level. And it's basically because uh, China canceled the farm trip to Montana this coming week. And that in itself kind of shows the investors that uh, trade war still going on. There's still trade tensions and China doesn't really give a fuck. So uh, basically that's what caused the dump. And uh, we see that the overall market is closing very weak. However, with the futures, uh, with us gapping up right now, uh, back up over this 300 level, uh, it really depends on what it does tomorrow, right? Uh, we have some key levels to watch here. This 300, obviously very, very key as uh, this is where we dumped on Friday uh, with massive volume as well. Uh, coming over here onto the daily chart real quick, you see that we have uh, prior, a few weeks ago, we were trading uh, in and around this 294 area and it finally popped up and over. And then from here, I drew a trend line up and uh, this trend line kind of tags the 300 level. So it really depends on whether it can hold this 300. If it can hold the 300, it'll continue to go up uh, to, to begin with, in my opinion. And uh, the Asian market right now is uh, opening up a little bit and it's uh, running pretty well. So we'll have to see what it does. However, if the 300 fails again, uh, we're gonna come back and test these lows. This 298.25 area, this is um, September 18th low, okay, with massive volume. This is where we bounced on uh, Wednesday. Okay, so it has reclaimed uh, as it, if it gets stuff around the 300 tomorrow, uh, this is going to be the target I'll be watching. Uh, you'll notice this green shaded area here. This is a key support area uh, that I've marked off here in the daily chart. So coming over here, uh, if we are coming down, it needs to stay above this 297, 297.5 area for the SPY to continue to go bullish. Um, if it snaps, then uh, we are going to be, there's not much holding it up and we could be coming down hard. Uh, we do see that this uptrend line has been breached though, so it might try to retrace right now. And uh, tomorrow, um, we'll have to see what it does in the pre-market and uh, see if it gets dumped or gets stuffed from this trend line here. Okay, so that's the SPY. Uh, go, moving forward, uh, the first ticker that I will be paying attention to is Roku. So let's load up some drawings on Roku as well as on the daily chart. Okay, so uh, Roku had a massive down day and uh, basically uh, it's been pulling back a lot lately. However, I mean, if we're gonna scroll back from the beginning of the year, this chart is still very bullish. So some could argue that this is just a massive pullback. Uh, we have a lot of analysts defending this bullish action. Uh, we also have Pivotal Research, one of the analysts who came up with a negative um, analyst here, a negative report to uh, hammer it down some more. And all this action was caused by uh, midweek that Comcast is giving away their TV box as well as more competition from Apple as well. And uh, with that said, some areas I'll be looking at right now, I mean, 
it's very key where we bottomed out on Friday at the 103.50 area. So I have that marked off around the 103.80, 103.50. This was uh, an earnings gap, I believe. Let me see if I scroll back here. Okay, um, this was an earnings gap, I believe, and uh, it basically made a top here and we are sitting right above it. So does it keep coming down tomorrow? It all depends if this level holds, right? Um, we have a key level in the afternoon on Friday after the dump, we had a retracement. This 109.75 area is basically this blue uh, moving average. This is the 100 move, simple moving average on the daily chart. Um, as the stock was dumping, I was looking and uh, trying to see how this stock would react. And as you can see, it's unable to get back above it right now. However, I mean, if we do get a gap up, that would essentially means that we got back above it. Um, also, this 110.42 area, this is uh, where basically the end of the day retracement happened to fail. Okay, so right here we have a resistance zone. Uh, so this is going to be the key area I want to watch here tomorrow. Uh, if it stays above this area, I want a long back up. Uh, essentially on a daily chart, it has filled this massive gap over here. So uh, if it stays above this 109.75, uh, I like the plan to be a long to uh, retrace some of what it lost on Friday. And uh, my target here is probably right back up to this gap at 117.50. Okay, uh, we also see 113.50 over here. I believe this was a key breakdown area for the day. So let me mark that off here. Yeah, so this was also a key breakdown on the day as well. And, uh, oh, 113.40. Uh, aside from the key breakdown, I mean, this is the next high on the daily chart from uh, July 16th. So from here, we'll see what it does around this 113.50. And if it breaches, uh, the next target is to get back up to the 117.50 here. However, I mean, if the reverse happened, if we're staying under this key area or if we get rejected, uh, we could see another down move coming all the way back down to test these lows here. And if this 103.50 breaches, uh, the next area I'm looking at is, well, here on the daily chart, we have, first of all, the 100. And then uh, the true... The true support, though, is basically right around here. This is where people bought. Okay, so 96, 98, 50, and 96 area. So I'll be watching those as targets on Roku. And with that said, uh, next up we have Netflix. Now you'll see that you'll notice a pattern in the stocks that I'm picking tonight. All these stocks are in the video streaming category or have some sympathy to it. So uh, Netflix, video streaming as well. And you see these video streaming companies are all getting hit ever since Apple decided to talk about their, uh, their video platform here. So with Netflix, um, this stock is very highly in play. As you can see, we have mass volume. Actually, going back to Roku, I like to watch the stock because... Uh, we had massive volume. So uh, the relative volume on this day on Friday was 5.36. So moving forward, going to tomorrow, I think it still will have high relative volume and uh, maybe not as much as we did on Friday, but uh, the stock is still very much in play. Netflix as well, um, high relative volume at 3.32, uh, average true range of 9.67. Uh, we see that the stock has dumped huge as well. Loading up some drawings real quick. And here on the daily chart. Right here. Um, what happened? Netflix D. Oh, this is a uh, prior... Okay, it's okay. Uh, we can just draw up some drawings here real quick anyways on Netflix. So beginning of the year, right? Uh, this is the area I want to focus on right now. Um, right here at this level, 
we have beginning of the year at the 270, which is, first of all, a key psychological whole number. Second of all, it was uh, the high as the first day of the year. So we have breached it and now kind of reclaimed it. So this is a key area I want to watch, specifically the 271, if we were to look a little bit deeper into the intraday. This is where we failed and had massive volume during the close. So I want to see how it does in the pre-market, whether it's above opening above or below this 271 area. Uh, if we are going to have a bearish day, the next area we're coming down to is around the 260, okay? As well as the low of day. So the low of Friday was 265.98, so 266, okay? So that's the target on the bottom side. Uh, that's the support I'll be looking at. And over here, uh, if we are gonna get a retracement, we have uh, solid volume on the intraday here on Friday at uh, 275.50. Okay, so this is the first candle down, the lows here. And it basically kind of hung around here and got stuffed at 10.30. So this is a key area if I'm gonna be playing along, looking for rejection, see how it reacts here. And then also this candle here, uh, 270.750. Um, 277.50 is pretty key, I believe, on the daily chart as well. So let's take a look here. 277.5, right around there. And again, we go back to the beginning of the year. Right here is uh, the top of this candle, this uh, second day. Okay, so this marks off as a key resistance for me as well. So I'll be watching these levels, the 277.5, 275.5, um, 271, and 266. Okay, that's Netflix. Um, Apple. Now, as we move forward, we get less and less relative volume. However, the stock is still in play. Uh, Apple is very interesting to me. Because of the daily chart, it's setting up to... It's looking like it's about to fa fail. So uh, coming over here, we have, huh, let's see, let's delete all these lines. Uh, coming over here, we do have a bullish chart on Apple. Okay, so something like that. However, we kind of failed the trend here. Um, Looking over here on this volume on July 31st, uh, I do see a little support area that we're trying to hold up on the day. So ideally we have a support zone. So let's load that up here real quick, AAPL. Okay, so uh, this 217.50, uh, we set a low on the day and uh, it closed very weak, however, the SPY futures are gapping up right now, so it might take this back up. We'll have to see what it does in the morning. Coming over here, I see some support area here, 216.50 and 215.5. Um, on the daily chart, this is where significant volume is. Okay, um, if I take this line and move it away, 216.50, as you can see right here, massive volume drawing horizontal line across this is prior support gapped up and over we're sitting right up right above this area this support area here so really depends on what it does tomorrow if we are opening under this area then uh, we could have a massive sell-off down to first 215 and then uh, all the way down to the 210 area this 50 ma um this 212.50 also i guess is an area that we should be watching for, okay? So Apple, um, finally we have Disney. Disney is interesting because it's basically a sympathy play to all these charts, right? Uh, also high relative volume, we have 2.94 on Friday and uh, it's trading under the 133 all day. Uh, this 132.50, very, very key level. So let's come over here to the daily chart and mark that off. As you can see, we have support here, support, support. Okay, a lot of support here. And if this 132.50 breaks, uh, we are going down to the 131 that I'll be watching. 
as this is the earnings highs on April 12th, right? And uh, from there, we also have the 130, which is in around this area, the closing price of April 12th. So the two support, I want to see a pop and drop, see what it does around this 133 area as I try to regain it or tested it a few times on Friday, unable to break over. So this is a key resistance level. Uh, looking over here, this 134 as well. Um, massive volume coming down here. Eventually on Friday, we uh, gap down under it and this thing just sold off. So looking pretty weak, but we are sitting right at support right now. So depending on what it does tomorrow, uh, this 132.50 is what I'll be watching. Uh, if it holds above, it's a long thesis. If it holds above this 133 breach and holds, uh, it could be an add to the 134 as well. So Disney. And finally, on the side watch, I'll be watching DocuSign. Uh, they had positive earnings uh, a few weeks ago, and it's been on tear ever since. Coming over here, DocuSign is a uh, newer stock. Um, and the next area of support, oh, sorry, resistance I'll be watching is the 6580 area. Okay, so right here, as you can see, we have a lot of resistance over here at the 6580. Uh, we had a major run up from the earnings, and the chart is looking a little bit overextended. Um, the way it closed, it closed pretty well, uh, dumped right before the bell, but we got some phantom ticks getting it bought up. So 65 and 65.85, I'll be looking to uh, get in a short. Uh, the thesis is for a pullback day, not necessarily for it to lose all its gains, maybe pull it back down to the 64 and see what it does here, 64 and uh, 63.75, okay? So that's DocuSign, and that's basically uh, my list of stocks that I'll be looking to trade on September 23rd. Uh, if you enjoy my watch list and uh, understand, want to understand more about my plan, uh, check out the video link description below and uh, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys all bright and learning tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Ciao.